Hi guys, hope you're doing really well out there. Um, we are back today. Um, I've got a really, really interesting guest who it's been far too long since I last had on the channel. So um, I'm really happy to welcome back Eve Lorgan. Uh, she's an author and researcher of uh, the very popular books, Alien Love Bite and The Dark Side of Cupid. And you can find more about her work at evelorgan.com. Eve, how have you been? Long time no see. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure. Um, yes, it's been a few years and um, I'm doing good. And yeah. things are actually looking a little bit better, even though sometimes it seems bad with all the uh, 2020 and what's happened since then. But I feel that things are actually moving forward in, in, in other ways. So I'm glad to say that. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes when we see the 3D movie, if you see what uh, if you see what I mean by that, it, it can seem like things are getting really crazy and out of hand. But I think in the areas that both you and I talk about um, quite often, the the unseen, I think they're very scared and very panicky. And we were just talking off air. You can get on your computer the the construction started again literally 10 minutes before uh the, the interview so is that what you're finding are you feeling that as well well i'm seeing both um like you said um there seems to be definite subpopulations who i don't know i think they're in the minority but their control system seems larger than what the what they really are and then they're panicking and so a lot of these um predatory uh, pathological and, and demonic behaviors are manifesting all over the place. And one wonders if it's it's part of a, a larger plan to create as much chaos to reinstitute a type of control for, you know, the new world order. Um, but within that, I think we're seeing a lot more manifestations more openly of things that, and that maybe in the past were a little bit more covert or not seen like uh, paranormal, supernatural, and just outright psychopathic behaviors that now it's just like out in the open. And yeah. it's as if they're just, it's a big playground for them now. Yeah. So. Do you think that's, uh, cause we know that they've been doing things with CERN and opening portals and stuff like that. Do you think that's partly to do with that or are the, are the veils just thinning, do you think? And these, these beings are able to interface easier or? What would you put that down to? I would say it's both. And that, you know, traditionally there were always um, means and ways in which portals could open in dimensional doorways, like during rituals or whatever, certain astrological. And there are certain people who are who are utilized to do that, who are in cults or being handled to do that, sometimes unconsciously. And I, But I think there's other scientific and medical means which have opened doorways that we didn't know about that are they're more easily done in and through people. And I don't want to say how I think it's already pretty much known. Yes. I've had actually people report things in a way that let's say within a certain period of time, let's say six months since a particular uh, treatment, um, they're starting to notice paranormal activity in ways that they would never have done before, like shadow people popping up in their homes and in and through people that, have also um, done the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not just clairvoyant people or, um, you know, there's certain kinds of people who may perceive these things more often or certain homes that are haunted or certain places, but now it's happening more and more. Um, and I think it's connected to that. Yes. Which we don't it's have interesting to you say okay. that because um, for a long time now, uh, many people have, have said to me, and, and I've noticed the same, that people's behavior is becoming more and more kind of strange, insane, angry, people are more angry. Um, and I, I definitely think that the treatment <laughs> uh, has opened portals in people. Yeah. In fact, there was a video, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure it's gone viral anyway. And I think it was an Australian uh, Christian minister who did a interview with a with a known witch who admitted to be a witch and was possessed by a demon who would work through her to carry out certain um you know they use them to do certain jobs for the dark side and yes. so she basically admitted all these things in in a video that that's gone around and of course that's considered subjective by a lot of people but i believe that <clears throat> there could be reasons for this and in fact there's there's others who are um who have a lot of integrity in terms of research that i suppose i could name um like Harold Kautzvela has talked about um, 
in-depth scientific, medical, paranormal, and shamanic ways of um, understanding and defining and observing what's happening on whole other levels, which actually connect to the topic that we wanted to talk about today, which mm -hmm. has to do with you know the twin flame experience where it's questioned whether or not is this a real twin flame or is this you know the counterfeit by dark forces and what's really happening so i think that there's truly let's say supernatural and paranormal reasons and uh mechanisms but then there's also a question on whether or not there are actually advanced technologies that are being utilized to magnify or create these things mm -hmm. maybe in conjunction with um alien technology or what appears like alien technology. And so now I'm having to look back, <clears throat> even in the histories of the work that I've done, in light of the probability that there are advanced technologies that kind of interface with real human emotions and spiritual energies that can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that there is a technology, but there's also the, the real paranormal thing that's it's kind of like a black magic. Yes, yeah. I actually know the video that you were talking about. I, I watched it as well, and uh, yeah, it's kind of creepy. And she basically yeah. says, "Yeah, it's all, it's all witchcraft. What they've done over the last few years, and uh, yeah, really creepy." But there was also, I don't know if you were aware of the videos um, where people were passing from the treatment. They were like looking up in the air, and and then it was like something was soul snatching was the words that came to to my mind i don't know whether that was what was literally going on but then there definitely seemed to be you know some kind of entity or something that they were trying to back away or hide from did you see that yeah yeah, yeah. i mean one wonders about that it would be interesting to see if <clears throat> like cats and dogs if they were present at the same thing that they would be seeing it too because I know that um, animals in particular are very um, psychic, many, mm -hmm. and and this has been reported for years. Why right? we used to call cats like reptilian busters because yeah. sometimes people who had cats, the cats would actually protect them and wake up and and know when something was present or know before an abduction kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's why they were revered in in Egypt. I think they knew what cats were. They're very astral, aren't they, cats? Oh, very much so. Yeah. I'm often amazed and uh, that's kind of an offshoot, but I had an experience with a cat where it was, uh, the cat was completely telepathic and could enter my dreams anyway, <clears throat> but it was a cat that was, um, that I knew as a little girl um, at a babysitter's and it was my favorite cat that I would always pet. And then I had a memory of that while, while the, the new cat, the real in, later incarnation, <laughs> I think they reincarnate, was on my lap and I was thinking about how oh, maybe this is the same kitty, you know, and are you the same kitty? And he turns his head around and looks at me like, yes. And, <laughs> and that cat would enter my dreams and got, actually got mad at me when I went through a divorce and I left the cat with my son because it was his cat. Right. At his dad's house. And then the, the cat was very mad at me and came in my dreams. It was like pissed off that I left. <laughs> so I think cats are amazing. They're, they're very uh, intelligent beings. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, aliens too, but that's, that's a whole another I think if we all could just embody the essence of a cat, we would be free tomorrow. You know, cats don't, they don't give a rat's ass, do they? They're, they're like, no, you go to stroke them, they run off. They're like, when they want to come back, they'll come back. But they just, they just embody that sovereign energy for me. I, I just think that we should all be like cats. <laughs> they are unique. And I remember I had a client once that um, she had, a, it was an alien love bite with a reptilian hosted, I mean, I get so many stories, but it was a, right. I guess it was a friend that actually had a reptilian attachment and that um, she was dating him. And that at the beginning parts of the date, he would come over, you know, to go out. And then if he came over, the cat would literally run away and barf around the, the entire house because he was reacting to the reptilian that was in. Yeah. And so, you know, it was her, her animal's way of uh, warning her, like when she was out on dates, like who was safe and who wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, they do say, they do say uh, if your pets don't like someone, it's a sure sign that there's something up with, with that person. I I experienced something similar the other the other month. I went on a hike and there was a group of us and we stopped off to uh, to get some food at this place in the middle of Mexico somewhere. And um, there was this like this dog and it just went for this one particular guy. 
turns out I found out later this guy was a, a police officer in the UK. So he's probably, you know, he's probably a hosted person anyway to do that job. But it just went for him like really, really funny how it how it happened. So yeah, I definitely think there's truth yeah. in that. <laughs> well, sometimes dogs are well, that's a whole other story. <clears throat> like possessed themselves. Sometimes dogs yeah. can have demons, but it reminds me of a story that happened when, when my son was visiting and then, then we'll talk about the other thing, but I have to mention it because it's, it's a paranormal weird thing. There's a place in North Carolina called Chimney Rock and it's in Western North Carolina outside of Lake Lure, Asheville, whatever. And um, I guess along that Chimney Rock, there's a, I think it's called Devil's Rock. And it re- literally looks like the side uh, a profile of a devil with a funny nose and a face. And you look at him like, oh my God, I mean, it looks like a devil like popping out of the mountain. And right. so they made it like a, a tourist attraction where you can look at it and stuff. So I took my son, a son there, you know, when he was visiting one several years ago. And there was a group also looking at the the devil rock. And, and I knew I said, there's something behind this because when they call something a devil rock, a lot of times there's something behind it, an ancient Cherokee legend, for example. Yeah. And so um, there was like a, a young teenage boy and a bunch of people kind of hustling around and, you know, joking around, making jokes and mockeries at this demon rock <laughs> and my son was there was like i don't know mom there's something wrong there, there's like a demon there's a demon here and and it's that dog and i don't know and i'm like oh that's really weird you know and so within minutes this dog got demon possessed and and attacked the boy that was like joking around about the, de- wow. the rock and it bit him in the nose and his nose was like all bloody and it was running away so wow. it was like it was really strange so sometimes uh, these kinds of things do happen and it, yeah wow. yeah there's always something like you say something shady about things that are named like that some <laughs> kind of weird rituals taken place there or something so yeah fascinating so many stories um so let's get into uh you know the real crux of what we wanted to speak about today it's a really a really fascinating area just the whole idea of your take on like this phenomenon around this, the, the twin flame and, you know, we'll get into the alien love bite thing because I'm always, there's always new people that are not aware of that phenomenon and it's very real. So, yeah. so what, what's been going on with your research into this, the, this phenomenon and recently? Um, well, really it's uh, people often come to me since of my work is about the weird relationship thing oftentimes that's what brings them in to want to talk about something really weird that's happened that they think is a alien love bite or a false twin flame or, you know, some weird paranormal thing, or they're starting to wake up to the fact that there's more going on in their life than they thought. Let's say maybe they thought they're in a a secret space program, or maybe they did have alien encounters and it's still going on or with their partner. So that's what comes in. But more often than not, Sometimes they have had what they thought was a twin flame um, relationship years ago. And then um, the way that it affected them, you know, it's still affecting them with respect to trauma and a kind of uh, deepened connection or even obsession still with either um, a person who they thought was a twin flame, or this is another thing that happens uh, where it's, it happens like in the astral. So they think, they feel like somebody is their twin flame, but it's only operating in the astral. And, and then they will have synchronistic communications with, with respect to the person. Sometimes it's a, <clears throat> it's a famous figure, but not necessarily so. But it's not someone they necessarily met and had a real 3D relationship with, but they're having this ongoing astral twin flamey thing with, um, it's either a spirit pretending to be that person or it's that person who's hosted by an entity that's, you know, interacting on this other level of reality, but it's, it's, it's very real and mm-hmm. they can't seem to extricate themselves from a sense of obsession. So there's this whole aspect of love obsession that will happen with, we can call it the false twin flame or an alien love bite or a dark Cupid, but that it's like a sticky, we'll call it a sticky energy <clears throat> that continues to traumatize them or take their energy or keep them from really focusing and getting on with their life really with like a regular relationship yeah yeah that, that's why they they're often set up isn't it um these love bites or yeah they, because there's something about that person that's a threat to the matrix and um uh i, I i've had a couple myself <laughs> in the past and they're really um 
yeah, they're overwhelming because like you say, they they just uh, they show up as more often than not everything that you would want in in your other half, let's say. And <laughs> before you know it, you've got smear campaigns and trauma and you're just dealing with a um, complete sociopath, narcissistic, psych psychopath. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I've had people who are, quote, they're a bit relatively normals, right? I mean, it's kind of a funny term that we use in my group, like, oh yeah, and they're they're like normals, but even normals, if they have like an alien love bite, um, because of course, in, in the history of the work that I've done very often, how it all started was um, people had alien visitation and abduction histories where it tended to be multi-generational and happened more often in their lives numerous times. And then they would have these alien love bite setups. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, we'd, I'll have a client who reports something similarly, but they're not somebody who has an alien abduction history or even a lot of the reasons why I think that's happening. And they just uh, were opportunistic for a particular predatory person that had that effect on them and really like threw them under the bus in mm -hmm. terms of trauma. And when people like normals who, who they know what trauma is, and I've mentioned this before, just just to get to the impact of why we're even talking about this, that there could be someone who had a trauma in college, let's say a date rape or something, and they were traumatized. But when they had a like a love bite, dark Cupid with one of these weird hosted characters, um, the trauma lasted longer and was worse than a violent rape. Mm. So yeah. we're talking about things that affect you on, unless you've really been through it, you don't know. You don't yeah. really know the extent of, you know, how much trauma that brings. And I think it's because there is a supernatural paranormal thing that happens yeah yeah energetically it's almost like there's a strong cording isn't there like a strong um yeah connection where it does make it really difficult to recover from like it can take a long long time so i'm sure you've got a, a lot of stories to to share about these people showing up in uh, people's <laughs> lives is there any that sort of stick out um oh boy there's so many, <clears throat> um, and I, but I can't name names because I don't want to. No. Uh, but there was a case, and I was hoping to pull it up because it was it was a, it was like almost a poster board for all the things that are shady that are actually responsible for weird experiences that actually connect um, to some ETs, what people think are ETs, uh, ascended masters, according to the Blavatskian um, thing. And and then um, spiritual groups that well, one client, her name was Grace. That was the name. And I wrote an article about it in terms of a false twin flame thing. And her experience was she was raised in a in a type of Christian doomsday cult as a teenager with her family of origin. And so she didn't she just want, didn't want to get into that at all, thought it was all crap and basically turned into a more of a new age spirituality, Native American, um, you know, light beings, ascended masters and going to spiritual groups that were run by these you know it's kind of like a classic new age spiritual light and healing kind of group that she would go to so i think she was doing this is what happens to a lot of people like let's manifest our soulmate let's you know be open to the universe and you know put in our intentions of what we want and she was doing things like that like the classic uh manifestation exercises that a new age thing would do in a personal ritual and then um, having then being told tel telepathic messages that okay you will meet your your soulmate twin flame in four months and four moons and you need to go to this project healing light place and it was like a real spiritual group like locally and so she meets like the head person who happens to be a man let's just call his name John that wasn't his name yeah. and you know talks about some of her experiences you know having been wounded but she had psychic gifts right so she had natural gifts of empathy and healing and clairvoyance and channeling because a lot of people do and was um, willing to offer her good natured you know gifts for this group and so got connecting with the head the head guy who was really like a a predator, um, spiritual guru. Uh, what what we call it? Oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, so so it turned out that you know 
meeting and talking on the phone and he'll help her with her wounds and she'll help him with, you know, the issues he's having with his wife and they're going to kind of help heal each other. But the dynamic of the relationship is that he's, he's a higher on the hierarchy because he's like the guru of the spiritual group, but, but she could help him, you know, with his wife and his healing and he'll help her and she'll tell her, tell him all about the vulnerabilities and the cult she was in and the sexual abuse or this or that, and really wants to spiritually heal, you know, bring in her divine twin flame and then meanwhile um these luring her into um i think she had like a ufo sighting and she saw a portal you know open up in a photograph and then um a ufo and then ufo dreams so long story short she's you know talking to this man who's uh, basically run by the i think he was channeling the el moira ascended master okay that's part of the whole blavatsky and ascended master crew right <laughs> and uh, so but along with that they would believe they were in contact with benevolent light beings ets where sometimes they would show up with a ufo or a portal or they'll come into your dreams and so she had dreams, was kind of afraid to remember everything. So he was kind of helping her to feel okay about remembering what happened during this UFO kind of dream with maybe some kind of ET. So she remembers having uh, what appeared to be a classic uh, abduction where, you know, there's sleep paralysis, um, the vibrations, and then being pulled up into a craft-like environment where it appeared to be like the medical table kind of stuff. And I don't think she saw grays and I'm not sure if they were beings that appeared to be operating under the guise of this El Moira ascended master. And right. so in this, in this dream abduction, it really is an astral abduction. Yeah. Uh, she's put into like a situation where she's being prepared as a bride for this man who's the the leader of this cult group run by you know this el moira ascended master so it, so it's almost like a ritual is being set up in this astral abduction to be the bride of this man who would be like the acting twin flame right but the et ascended master operating behind this thing so she started having these weird experiences and then she reports to him well did you have the same dream like you were you were in it and we had um it was like a ritual marriage kind of thing and that she felt pregnant and was having weird um, sensations in her womb and so she talks to another woman um, in the group who can do this light language and she could also channel this light language and and she was being told by this woman who was a psychic looking into well what really happened are you pregnant with this astral child like this uh, spirit being that's a homunculus from this freaking astral marriage ritual that happened in in the abduction but it was like a dream astral abduction yeah. And then through all these like health issues and like weird shit and, and vampirization as a result of this thing that happened. And she believed that she was actually pregnant with like a spiritual astral product or a child. Wow. But I think what was happening is she, what they do, and I hate to sound complicated, but it's mimicking and allowing an agreement of entrapment through an astral ritual, which is like a type of sexual astral tantra that links you in with these beings who may um, overshadow or even possess let's say a partner but once they link you in they want the woman in particular who has a womb and a womb is a portal from the heavens to earth okay so this is why a lot of women are lured into these uh, sexual tantra uh, magical operations with supposedly good gurus or lamas or uh this or that playing that game and then they want them to mm, manifest in their womb space uh, what they want to bring into reality and sometimes it's a being and sometimes it's uh, to bring in to host the woman so sometimes um and i know this is complicated but this oh, i found this out well, they're mimicking this okay so in many of these groups they think it's a benevolent spirit guide and they're going in the astral realm to get teachings even right um, but when you, when I've heard some of the satanic ritual abuse testimonies, such as some that I have written about on my website, one of them was the Carolyn Hamlet uh, expose of the fifth, uh, what do they call it? Fifth twin flame, fifth fire initiation ritual. Okay. So there's, there's a real ritual that she actually observed with one of the people that was in the cult. And by the way, her blog, in fact, Carolyn Hamlet's blog is no longer online. And I copied and pasted from years ago because I knew this, this relates to this twin flame thing 
but it also relates to many of the experiences that people are having. And, and when they do this in the high level black magic, they'll use a, a couple called a twin flame couple that goes through a fifth fire initiation ritual. Okay, so this is a really high level ritual. Well, according to the woman who reported this, it was basically breaking away from the SRA programming and control. Um, there would be a couple known as the twin flame couple that would take place, uh, a fifth fire initiation ritual, which is only done with twin flames according to their ritual. And so the whole reason why they did this is they wanted to create a, a quote, hybrid Nephilim child or product of this twin flame ritual. So in the, in the satanic ones, what would happen is they would give their spirits, uh, allow themselves to be sacrificed and give up their soul in this ritual to um, receive this being that's like hanging out in 5D or whatever in the astral, but that wants to come into incarnation in 3D world and start operating and doing this agenda. So they're trying to- give it back to the demon. Well, they can't take on regular bodies. So no. they have to do it in a certain way where they literally come through in this ritual and then there may be a pregnancy. And this is a different kind of thing altogether than the even what people are reporting in abductions where sometimes you get pregnant, they take the fetus within the first three months, or sometimes you have the child and, and sometimes it's on the craft and it's a real hybrid and they show you your children. But in this fifth fire initiation ritual that Carolyn Hamlet described was much more actually sinister and kind of creepy. Um, if the couple, apparently the couple did have a child, she conceived the one who was you know, the witch or whatever, who gave up her soul. They both give up their souls to do this for the cult because they believe these beings are higher ascended masters or whatever, and that ha hanging out in a different dimension. And so they come through. And then when she has the child, the child grows up in a pregnancy that is much more rapid. You're not talking about a nine month pregnancy. You're talking about apparently like within five months, it's full grown. And, and the being that is given birth to is a different kind of human being that's fully hosted by the being that they brought in through that ritual, that conception ritual. Wow. And then she went on to say, um, you know, as her experience that most high level political leaders are actually products of some kind of ritual pregnancy. So they're, they're not fully human. In other words, some of them really are not human and they're operating as humans in high levels of control and positions in the world. Yeah. So that kind of, it's a super creepy factor, but this whole thing about an astral twin flame union and then feeling like they're pregnant with a homunculus or some sort of astral product and then manifesting it in the world or in the astral plane. So a lot of these weird kind of things go on under the guise of them thinking that they're they're doing good for a twin flame and it's really something more sinister. And and then it and it connects with some of the experiences like an astral abduction but you end up on a craft kind of like an ET abduction but they're trying to do a mock a marriage bridal ceremony. So it's it's a weird thing that's going on with some of these uh some of these groups. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, it just goes to show like how far these beings go to to roll out the things that they want to roll out and to give confirmation bias by showing up as uh, you know these light beings or lights in the sky. I've, mm -hmm. I've I've seen and heard so much of this down the years from my own work and where people have you know, say someone was um, working with who they thought was Archangel Michael, and Archangel Michael will be Tell this one particular lady lost her pet and so Archangel Michael told her where her pet was okay. so that was it she had full faith in him but then it turns out later that he, she was a, a prominent new age figure that he this Archangel Michael was trying to get her to uh, promote this whole gig which hooks people into this false white light grid so she became a you know a, a voice a, a spokeswoman for this whole like I don't know what what the term was some kind of light grid and she was hooking all these other people into all this false light. And but because that that entity had found her or told her where her pet was, she completely believed it. Mm -hmm. Seen it the same with deceased, how they were used, deceased members of families. Mm -hmm. It's really cruel and evil. And this is a huge reason for for my channel and the things that I talk about. It's just really getting across to people to be super, super careful with what 
you, you know, I, I personally say don't connect to anything, but, you know, because this kind of stuff can happen. Yeah. And a lot of times people don't know and they're giving consent in ways that they, they didn't realize it. And a lot of people are just innocent wanting to use their gifts and they're empathic and they're, they're on their healing path. And, and this, this is part of, well, when we talk about the demonic, why problem reaction solution. And this is like a common theme that David Icke brought about with respect to larger agendas, especially the reptilians, where they would create a problem. There would be a predictable reaction. And there's a solution. So I think this same thing has been done to humanity on many levels with the different religions and faiths and spiritual gurus or truths where let's say, and, and this is what Barbara Bartholick had, we discovered along the way, when we look back in hindsight over, let's say generations, and we see the evolution of a lot of even the UFO contactee movements and abductions, that there it tends to be a long-term program where it's like problem re reaction solution in order to entrap these people into promoting their uh, infected cults mm -hmm. and they these cults uh, have like an egregore energy that you know moves people around like on a chessboard in these hyperdimensional interference kinds of things and there's a certain feel to it and i believe that uh there, there was a man who Doreen Virtue interviewed on one of her shows, and she's well known who had worked with a lot of this angel stuff in her early work. And then she became a Christian because she realized a lot of this stuff is like, oh, it's kind of infected. You know, these beings will establish their bona fides just like a good intel counterintelligence agent in order to get the trust. And then and then, you know, 80 percent truth, 20 percent bullshit to steer people off their their highest destiny, according to their highest calling which is of God, okay, of lack of a better term. So this is what they're doing, is yeah. uh, doing a problem reaction solution. So let's say someone was in a Christian uh, church and it was like a total, um, you know, hypocrite. There was, they're infected by hypocrites because it's been watered down and corrupted over the years so that there's no real spiritual uh, Holy Spirit or fire going through these churches. And so they get a bad feel. They get triggered because they don't like you know, churchianity. And so then they'll go to the opposite path towards um, some new agey thing or something else. And then it throws them right back well, out of the firing pan and into the fire, which is part of the problem reaction solution to spiritually encapture people into as many false corrupted systems as can be done by those who are deceiving yeah. um, the false light. And, yeah. and it's, it's unfortunate um, because what I'm seeing is that not all faiths or religions are bad although almost all of them have been corrupted or infected by some of these same entities and egregores. Mm. And so what, what we really need to do is being able to connect authentically to the, uh, we can call it the Holy Spirit, um, original awareness of your eternal spirit that's connected to the all that is good, not the false light, because there is fault light that- Not the fake religious <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So- it's uh, I wouldn't you know, you wouldn't know unless we lived through this and, and saw how it works over time. And then when you challenge, let's say if you challenge the channeler who's, you know, channeling the Archangel Michael, the fake one or, you know, whatever ascended master. And that's when the hell will break loose if they don't follow the telepathic orders that they're given. <laughs> then they'll get like this demonic oppression and all kinds of kind of weird demonic targeting when they go against the grain of what the cult is saying is the truth. So, and this is, this is the, the sad thing is that there's many who are, let's say in certain spiritual groups that for all practical purposes, if they, if they do the right thing, according to what they're told, you know, they're given uh, gifts and it makes it appear true and they're really spiritually gifted and they have accurate information Look but, up John, John of God. I mean, he was healing people from cancer and he ended up being a child trafficker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a prime example of that. And then, and this, I mean, I hear about things that I can't speak about because of, you know, you can't name names, but I will tell you that there are high level operators, you know, um, sometimes you can call them predators or gurus, or maybe in their early life, they were, they were fine. And they found a methodology that helped them heal and they became famous. And now they're promoting some kind of healing or whatever. And then, then I get reports of, of women who've been uh, targeted in some way by these high level ones who are using, they're basically doing types of, of magic. 
except yeah. now they they found the source of currency of power which a lot of times it is life force sexual energy sometimes kundalini energy that's activated in let's say a woman that they they know okay so this is this is the other thing the, a lot of the clients that would come to me many female they were of a maybe a certain bloodline well, we would call it starfire uh, but not always that where they have something that these high level predators who do have clairvoyant faculties okay they know it they'll zero in on these ones and they're not necessarily famous people who want to be out in the public domain but they know who you are before you know who you are and what you have yeah and so you will have certain kinds of people targeted by these high level ones that appear good but they know what they know and they know what to go after in terms of spiritual power and then we'll try to link up and, you know, with these love bitey kinds of um, good feel interactions in the astral or whatever, but really they're feeding on the power of certain ones that they know have it. Yeah. So there's some that, that have a higher dose of it. And I believe this is something that can manifest as um, a greater degree of, we're calling it original natural awareness. That's part of a spiritual eternal essence that appears to be in a large quantity um, in, in certain women in particular, or women of a certain bloodline. And some men have it too, but it, it appears that the women, because women have a womb, we have a womb space that is a portal from heaven to earth. So that is something, so women can be utilized to manifest things into physical reality, not just with children or astral babies or whatever, but with respect to what comes in our physical reality. So in a, in a ideal uh, male female relationship, let's say where they have a true divine counterpart and they are operating in integrity and love and um, let's say the real twin flame, then they can manifest and it can be very, very powerful in the world and be a threat. Yeah. So I believe that there are possibilities for that good thing to happen. It's just that many are getting uh, tricked by the counterfeit and and these are high level beings that i believe are maybe related to the biblical watchers or the nephilim or any level of that type of being that's basically taking advantage of um, the human spirit to to come into our reality or influence us or to get a good loose feed yeah, yeah. so that that goes into a whole territory in and of itself and i i would imagine you've run across this in your clients where um I'm just going to go ahead and state it because it, there's case studies in the dark side of Cupid where it's a type of, we'll call it a type of love bite. And where let's say one partner, and usually, I usually get the reporting partner who suffered because they were switched off or felt manipulated or narcissistically abused by the partner that was actually a channeler or they were possessed or partially possessed and had a lot of dark spiritual power to do things. And so when they get pulled in into this um, love by twin flame drama, a lot of times it's as if um, they drop into an archetype of power that plays them like a drama, myth drama in the love by dynamic relationship. But it's as if these high level beings who are operating through certain humans who have given them permission, then they, they drop in this archetypal power and then they play you like puppets in this drama myth of like Isis and Osiris and Mary Magdalene and Jesus. And we have this special mission in the world to save the world and save the earth. And it's like, bingo, they've got you. Yeah. So they're taking advantage of people who really want to do good and want to protect the planet. But there, there is a deception in some of that that I've seen that will actually... And this is unpopular, okay? I, I'm I'm gonna rip apart this narrative because this where they think they're doing good, let's say to save the planet, and they want to ascend with Gaia, and they want to, you know, be with Gaia forever. Okay, that that's a that's a binding. And if you do a blood ritual in a binding with the planet or mm. with Gaia, then you could be bound to this sphere, which is a, a lower density. Um, consciousness realm okay our as humans who have an eternal spirit we come from elsewhere and there are many who remember their eternal beingness that doesn't necessarily um, belong to this earth or stay with this earth forever so to stay bound to the earth as if you know like a bodhisattva i will never stop 
until all sentient beings are, are um, what, enlightened. I think that's a trap personally. Yeah. And not, yeah, not that it's not a good thing to desire people to become free, but we don't need to get entrapped into entrapping ourselves to a lower density to get recycled forever for the next point, which I want to bring up, and unless you want to say something about that. No, carry on. Um, because what, what I believe is happening, and oh, this, this sounds terrible, but there's a predator parasite. Enable the predator parasite programming that could come through actually many faiths or religions um, that appears to be altruistic and, and bodhisattva-like, but is actually entrapping us to be bound to the earth, okay? The earth and the underworld, okay? okay? So that when you die, you, you don't go back to the eternal realm where many of us are from. Most people don't remember, but some do. So you don't want to be bound and be earthbound after um, you pass on. Sure. And so we have to be careful the, the terms and conditions of agreements we make with certain idealistic belief systems. But uh, in reality, we this is a lower realm of consciousness. Well, even we know in our, quote, avatar bodies, or we can call them what we will. I think they're dreaming bodies that we have to step down our consciousness from our true nature, which really exists in the eternal now in a much more magnificent and lucid and fantastically powerful and wonderful beyond all conception. It is that is our true identity. Yes. But most of us don't remember, and we're lucky if we remember a few past lives here and there, but um, that's why it's so difficult is that we, we've come in with amnesia and it is a type of spiritual amnesia. So this is where we have to be careful what we allow in our terms of agreements yeah. so that it doesn't, uh, how shall I say it? There is an eternal original awareness that some people just have in, in larger quantities. Okay, so a lot of them are targeted because they, they must put off some frequency that is shining brighter and they don't need sometimes they don't even know they don't even know what or who they are it's just that they find themselves you know targeted by these like weird love bite predator types like over and over again mm. so there's something to that that um that our religions or new age stuff it's not all new age it could be any religion that enables that parasite predator and that's the infected program that's actually preventing us from being our highest destiny and true power. Yeah. Okay. And so we mentioned a little bit of this on, on before we did the recording because it was an aha moment that I had when I actually watched um, the Atlas Shrugged three-part movie. And I didn't read the, the real book of Ayn Rand, of course, but the, the main uh, emphasis of the, the story was, you know, how the world just kind of went downhill when, you know, the larger the government bureaucracy that's that's controlled and run by the predators or the demons in disguise and human bodies, for lack of a better term, and then creating a communistic system that appears, according to a hive mind, that we're all doing this for the whole, we're all like helping one another, that nobody has to, you know, be suffering in poverty or this or that, but really it's all con job because when you realize, you know, communism never worked, okay? So in the Ayn Rand uh, movie, it was like an aha for me because the, the main character who's like the hero savior of this whole thing was John Galt. Who is John Galt, right? And he's this you know scientist, uh, outside of the box maverick thinker who decides to create and then basically pop and create a new reality in this whole Shambhala-like uh, reality that exists still on earth, but in another dimension or that can't be accessed by those that you don't want to enter. So, and one of the realizations was that never allow your spirit to be sacrificed for the sake of this whole that's run by these predators who are using ideologies to basically vampirize, control, and manipulate so that we don't realize our highest destiny and yeah. actually create that reality. So that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. So, and so the, the programming, the, the infector corruption, corrupted program in a lot of these ideologies is to you know feed the predator parasite programming be a bleeding heart okay so and this is another thing and i'm sure you've seen over and over again and it's what has been omitted i think from many religions and spiritual faiths that if this wasn't omitted 
um, they would be more powerful. So what we're, what we're getting in a lot of our clients, spiritual bypass, right? Mm -hmm. They do their, they don't do their shadow work or their trauma recovery because they really don't understand the fullness of what that is and what it really means to truly recover, to uh, restore and remember our true identity, which is eternal. And so some people call it like for me, I'm, I'm actually become more Christian as a result because of my own personal uh, realizations that actually happened earlier in life. But I went through the whole ring of a row of, you know, new age, this Buddhist, that tantric, this meditation, that yoga, this Advaita Vedanta, spiritualism, like the whole nine yards until I finally came back to uh, Christ and um, what I call through grace a remembrance of my identity in Christ that is eternal in nature. And, it, and it's not an experience. It's an absolute realization. So I know how they infect things. They infect churches, but there is a real, there is a real Christ identity, eternal spirit thing that is our highest um, destiny of sorts. And that we can become that and realize that, but we are be being given a corrupted version that's a problem reaction solution of ultimate entrapment and reencyclement of human souls. And this is happening even more so. And I'm I'm going on a rant here and stop me if you if you no, have no, a okay. but because I think it's so important. Uh, many people are seeing this in a different way. They may articulate it, but they're they're perceiving it with their spirit eyes, or some who just can perceive this. Um and it's like the what they call in the uh, Rudolf Steiner teachings, the Ahriman, Ahrimanic uh, consciousness and the eighth sphere, which is a lot like the artificial intelligence overlay that's trying to overlay our consciousness and our world. And let's say the metaverse would be a prime easy example of what they want to upload us into for a like a hell world freaking eternal life in this shit fucking fake world, the uh, like the metaverse, you know? And so we don't we don't want that. That I think that's what the aim is to capture and upload our spirits, our souls into a type of eternal reality that is really not the natural, the original from which we came. Yeah. And so that's the danger in um, technologies, whether it's alien or supernatural black magic, that is um, taking away our ability to and our will, our spiritual will and our spiritual awareness that has the ability to overcome and transcend all these overlays and, and mind control programs of uh, entrapment. And yeah. so many minds are entrapped because our bodies that we were born in, in this world have been, I believe has been compromised over time, maybe since this whole Adam and Eve thing. And that prevents us from fully remembering and realizing our nature so that we can, we get kind of lost at a storm at sea and we, we forget who we are. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm always saying on my channel that we, we have no idea just how powerful we are. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to do all this stuff to us. I mean, like just what we've been speaking about just for this hour or so, the, the extent of the interference and the manipulation and the deception just on that level in terms of like twin flame love bite. That's just one level. I mean, we've been being bombarded with chemicals and all the other stuff that's going on. And I always say to people, well, Okay, you can look at it one way that it's it's not great, but why? Why are they doing that? Because they know our power, they know what we're capable of, but they know that we're the creator of worlds, um, and we can create something way better than what they're selling us, and and that's their biggest fear. Because as as soon as we start to step into that power, then we can move out of uh, this dystopian future that they have planned for us. They want us to dream that into reality. And there, there's a whole thing about uh, dreaming that that I've been working with clients where we're we're going a step beyond in exploring um, dreams and the ability to lucid dream as a means of um, recognizing um, program hacks, consciousness hacks, and ways in which our dreaming we have a and a the natural human spirit dreams into reality what we're uh, thinking and creating and maybe karma is part of it but what i believe is happening and this it's kind of complex that they're trying to hijack um the dreaming 
manifestation ability of humans, but it's almost like they could drop something in and hack it into your consciousness like an archetype. And then we're dreaming that archetype that they put in there. So mm -hmm. it's like um, with the aliens. Um, yeah. And this is something that Dr. Corrado Malanga got and, and articulated mostly in Italian, but it helps me understand how they do this. And it's, it's not as simple as a possession. I think possession, oppression, entity attachment is part of how we perceive and understand it. But with certain aliens, and this is why I think it's dangerous, but I don't want to, I don't want to be paranoid here, but they have a way of <clears throat> inserting let's say the alien consciousness, that's like a flash drive program of mental and a certain kind of spiritual energy that can um, be vivified by our, our eternal spirit, with, which Malanga called anima, which is a archetypically female soul. Like the, that's just archetypical. So if the alien virus consciousness thingy can be empowered and vivified by our eternal spirit it lives through us its will mm -hmm. and its identity so this is what's happening and it, it like it gets stuck in between and we have a conduit of heaven and earth let's say uh, between the body mind spirit soul and when we are clear we have access to our what our spirit is communicating through different archetype symbols and it comes down into our mind so that as a human in this time and space world we can get the communication yes. but the aliens are like inserting their stuff so that we can't get a clear uh perception of the flow of the eternal spirit and then instead we hear the spirit guides or the we think it's a past life or it's our identity as an alien in another reality so they're hijacking the will of the power of the eternal spirit and weakening that will power that could give us what we need to overcome. Yeah. And it's a lot of trickery. And this, this is what, you know, once you know it and you know, the trickery, it's really, I think it's demonic in some ways, because we don't need to live. We don't need to be hosts for parasites. No, no. Um, so <laughs> Yeah. So we don't need them, as, and they pretend they're our guides. Sometimes they pretend they're the protectors. They might make you think, "Well, th I was a Draco in my last life. I remember." So we have to be really careful with what we're perceiving. And yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm ranting here, but I get many people who come to me and say, "Well, I think that you know, I I have this attachment, or I had this in a past life, and this is the entity, and it's based on, well, they went to maybe a psychic or a channel or a tarot reader or whatever that told them, well, you know, this was your past life, and this is what's going on with you, yeah. and and maybe it's true, and maybe it's not, mm -hmm. but so I, I want people to be able to access their own internal spontaneous wisdom that comes from the true eternal connected to the good that will give them their self-discovery of what is their reality, their experience, who they are. Because we have to be careful what people tell us who we are, or who our twin flame is. We can get whole, all caught up in all this stuff that's not even true, but maybe it might be 50% true or 80% true, but that percent that's not, that just can send us on a whole downward spiral of being bound yeah. by these egregores, whatever they are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, just one other thing I wanted to ask, because I'm sure a lot of my viewers will, will want to know. I mean, obviously, you've got the whole new age concept of the, the twin flame, which is really toxic. And I mean, I've worked with people, sure you have, that has caused them a lot of damage. But would you say that there is such a thing as someone's sort of other half, so to speak? Does that actually exist? Personally, I think there's, we can have many soul connections, but I would like to know what your take is on it. You know, I, that's that's a very good question. I, I believe that we could definitely have, I mean, the more incarnations of experience we have, the more soul connections we have. So if you've loved someone in another reality, you can have that deep soul connection. So I think a soulmate thing can happen. And there's a question on whether is everybody truly an androgynous spiritual being, or is there another step we need to take to to manifest our divine fullness and power like and so there's there's these i would say it's questionable i don't know for sure i think there really can be actually a divine counterpart that makes us whole for a type of fullness in the human body 
that we have to be balanced inside or we can um, meet that like a Jesus and a Mary Magdalene thing. I think that there may be something to that, but I think it's been hijacked so bad that we really, we may not know, mm. but even in, in some of the Gnostic things, which I'm reviewing, um, not just the Nag Hammadi library, but some of the, what happened in the early days since Jesus came along, there was many different spinoff groups that uh, tended to have the real power. Like when there's the real supernatural power of the Holy spirit and something happens where um, they call it the robe of glory in some of these ancient writings, but it's a type of light body that you get after repentance, baptism, and the renewing of the body, mind, spirit by the Holy spirit that changes your light body nature. So, and it can happen with with a counterpart, like you could make that more powerful with a counterpart who's truly doing it in the right way, I think. So there are groups that believe this, like the early Valentinian Gnostics actually believe that in order to go back to our eternal realm was that we had to eventually go through it with what they call the bridal chamber ceremony of um, true communion with your beloved, which is like and this this is questionable. I'm just saying it based yeah. on what I see in the Nag Hammadi and and some of the writings of uh, a Gnostic. Um, he's a, actually an artist named Lawrence Caruana, and he wrote a book called The Hidden Passion uh, of Christ, where apparently in the old days, and this this is speculation, but maybe it's true in oral traditions, there wasn't just a single baptism of water that was a repentance of sins. It was actually five five seals and five types of baptisms, for lack of a better term, they had to be uh, completed in a spiritual maturity process before you can actually fully become empower empowered with your eternal nature like Christ um, before you go back to the eternal realm so you don't get trapped here in a recyclement issue. So you actually become invisible um, to the, the archontic powers by the, the final uh, empowerment of your true nature. So there may be something like that in a twin flame, but I'd say it's it has been hijacked by so many false um, sorcerers that that they want to do this because in the in the satanic realms they always have counterfeits and inversions of the real thing. Okay, yeah. so even within this whole fifth fire initiation ritual, it sounds similar to if there was a real five seals and that the final seal was the bridal chamber that enabled the you know, yin yang, um, you no longer like Adam and Eve are one inside you. And then that's how you ascend back to the realms of which we really came from and maybe being partially invisible to the lower rulers, mm. which will always try to manipulate and hack and entrap you. Mm. So, and this is where like certain high vibing people, if they vibe too high, you know, they come on the radar of, of the predators that want to keep the consciousness down so we can't live the fullness of the power of what we really are mm. so i won't say that it's not true and it doesn't exist i think it does but it's it's not as well known i it's the, the problem is i've found down the years is that because this earthly experience is let's face it it's pretty tough i mean i call it gangster planet and um a, <laughs> lot, of, a lot of people have a lot of trauma um from their childhoods and so they're so desperate for love. They're so desperate to find something that will, I don't know, help take away their pain that they really just clamber over anything that's sort of presented. And then that's when the problems come of, you know, chasing that person, not being able to let go. And because they're so, you know, they're so traumatized themselves. So it always comes back, I think, as well, to making sure that that for all of us, we need to make sure we're doing the inner work so so those blind spots don't get used against us so much and that that's absolutely right on um and then one of the mysteries that i've always uh was confounded by was the oh gosh um, when we talk about red flags and oh how come i didn't see this coming how come i didn't have the discernment of my true eternal spirit operating and i didn't see this coming and then later in hindsight you're like wow I just didn't know. I didn't perceive this. Why? Okay. And, and a lot of the why I think in hindsight now is true trauma recovery of 
you know, the complex PTSD or the attachment trauma that has led us to, to feel so hurt and lonely or shame-based or incomplete because of the lack of recovery from the trauma and that we actually believe lies about ourselves, the world and others when that trauma hasn't been truly healed to restore our soul. So I believe now, like when I look back on how the narcissists abuse us, it's always an assault on your, your original identity that creates confusion and self-doubt and separation from um, true loving and being loved, but which is actually part of your eternal nature. Yeah, so, it's they, 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 they will say and do things that make you believe things about yourself that aren't true. Uh, they, they have a way of getting in your head in that sense. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. I remember mine. And the other thing as well that, that stands out with my really bad one, which ironically came just before I started getting in, up into all the metaphysical stuff, right? So you can see when I look at the timeline, okay, so that's why. Um, but I remember I there was something in me like I knew that I had to walk away from this person, but it was almost like I couldn't. I was like disabled in some sense. It was such a strong, I would call it like an energetic cord where, yes. where I just, it was so difficult to just cut, even though I knew that I should, uh, that it was, it seemed supernatural when I look back. Well, I think a lot of it actually is for those who have the ability to perceive. And that's really the difference between, I mean, there's a lot of really astute people who talk about the narcissistic abuse thing and the prolonged grief and how it feels and seems like it's supernatural. No, no, it is. Mm. For those who have the ability to perceive, we know a lot of these psychological dynamics actually do have a counterpart in the unseen realms um, where, you know, like a demon of oppression, like you can have the demon of fear, anxiety, grief, the spirit of addiction. All these things could actually be demonic things that are not us. Mm. So what I've come to realize is that there's a lot of um, oppression, demonic oppression, and curses that may come from your ancestors that are really not yours, but they lay claim to your soul until we deal with that uh, spiritual changing, that spiritual agreement and that law. Yeah. yeah. So, and so it always goes back. This is what Dr. Karata Malanga realized. Like we can't really know who these understand these aliens until we get who we really are. Mm. So we had to, that means trauma recovery. That means connecting to our spiritual eternal now beingness through the heart and, and knowing like many people who are traumatized, they have this shame based core mm. guilt, all this icky, icky identifying not good enough, not worthy. And yeah, and it's like, but, but a lot of it is because it's demonic oppression and, and we've been split off from our original nature through the trauma itself, which has been engineered. Mm. And it is a spiritual program. It's the problem reaction solution of predators. Mm. So, um, you know, getting back to our true identity and realizing that is is what will enable us to to feel more love, I think, and to realize that, you know, we don't need it so bad in such a way that we we end up attracting, you know. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing, they, they don't like people healing either. Uh, you know, I've had it. I'm sure you've had it where people get like more targeted if they, you know, go to do some energy work or some inner child work. It's like things get ramped up. So um, the gold really is in in our own healing. You know, we're all and I used to, when I look back at my old self, um, when I first kind of quote unquote woke up, I it was a great way for me to project my unhealed trauma at the world, you know, shouting at politicians. And <laughs> I, look, I look back now and I, I can see that, you know, I thought I was doing good, but it was also a big part of me that was uh, projecting. And so, you know, to, to, to get on the, that healing path, I think is really what they don't want us to do. Or they want to make us feel guilty. Like, you know, the, the whole communism thing, for lack of a better term to, like if you don't constantly give to the whole and, and be you know, like this self is facing, you know, just give it all away. Yeah. Um, that, that takes our power because uh, we can do things based on guilt and shame and programming. That's not part of the, let's say true generosity and mm -hmm. true sacrifice. Like if you really love, you know, your children or, or someone you, you do things not because you think you have to, to be a good person and you, you know, play your role of sacrificing or tithing. But when you are really connected to true love and 
you, you will do these things naturally. So it comes from a naturalness in the heart that is awakened through genuine love so that you don't have to be told what to do or we're, we're being selfish and bad and should feel guilty. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I think that's a beautiful place to, to leave it, uh, that coming from that place of genuine love and authenticity and sovereignty. Um, so where can people find you, your website, your, what's going on with your YouTube channel? Are you uploading on that or what? Yeah, I had an old one and I would like to start doing that again. I'm, I'm a tech targ. Okay. I've got too much going on. So I do have a telegram group that's smaller in number, but sometimes I could make faster, uh, you know, links and on the telegram alien love bite is on telegram, but I have a regular website, evelorgan.com and alien love bite got Dot com go to the same one which i keep you know mostly blogs and whatever interviews i have i would like to do more but i'm i'm i just can't do it all i wish i had better te technical abilities so for now it's my website the telegram group my email and um, whatever shows i go on i usually post it on there's an alien love by facebook group as well right so i just have to stick with what i've got until i can get a channel going maybe yeah, yeah. Well, it's been fascinating talking to you. I could speak to you for hours about all of this stuff. We'll have to get you on uh, a lot sooner than than we have this time. So uh, thanks for coming on, Eve. And um, yeah, we'll catch up again soon. Okay, thank you. Great show.